one of the ways that science can show that belief in God is credible from a scientific perspective is by providing observational data from within the universe that indicates with a high degree of probability that time and physical reality had an absolute beginning. And of course, if time and physical reality had an absolute beginning, well then that metaphysically necessitates a transcendent creator or cause that gives rise to the very existence of time and physical reality. Because from nothing, only nothing comes. And so there are basically two sources of data in contemporary science that we can pull from in order to show the likelihood of an absolute beginning. One of them is the 2003 Borda Vilenkin Gu theorem or proof from space time geometry, which I've already covered in other video casts. And if our viewers are interested in the BVG theorem, they can check out our website, majacenter.com. The other source of data is the law of entropy technically referred to as the second law of thermodynamics. So the question is, how does the law of entropy indicate an absolute beginning of the universe? Well, first of all, we need to understand what entropy is. Entropy is basically the measurement of disorder within a physical system. So if a physical system is internally ordered, we say it has low entropy. Take, for example, our sun. Its energy is still in an ordered, organized, and usable form. So we say it has low entropy. But if an energetic system is highly disordered, not in a usable form, well then we say it has high entropy. One could think of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the residual radiation left over from the Big Bang that is highly disordered and in a non-usable form, just 2.7 degrees Kelvin. Now, the law of entropy, or the second law of thermodynamics, states that an isolated energetic system, that is to say, an energetic system that's left to itself without any sort of outside influence, as it uses its energy, it's going to progressively move from a state of order to disorder in an irreversible process. Now, let me share with you a little illustration that Father Robert Spitzer likes to use in order to communicate this irreversible process idea. Suppose we have a nice little triangular configuration of racked pool balls, and I hit the cue ball, which hits the racked balls, and sends them into a state of disorder. Now, generally, we're not too impressed with that. We expect that to happen. Of course, unless I'm, I'm the one playing pool because I'm horrible when it comes to pool. But suppose that I hit the cue ball, which hits the 15 ball, which hits the 14 ball, which hits the 13 ball, and all of a sudden, all of the balls zipped right back into their nice little triangular configuration and spit the cue ball out. How would we react to that? I think we'd be pretty impressed. Why? because it's highly, highly, highly improbable that the balls left to themselves would go from a state of disorder back to their racked position or state of order. Now, it wouldn't be a problem if I, an outside source, would take the balls and rearrange them into their triangular configuration, but left to themselves, it is highly improbable that they're going to go back to their racked or ordered position. So the second law of thermodynamics, or the law of entropy, states that an isolated energetic system, as it uses its energy, will progressively move from a state of order to disorder in an irreversible process. Now we're in a position to see how we can use this law of entropy to help substantiate the claim that the universe had an absolute beginning. And the first step is to recognize that from a scientific perspective, the universe is an isolated energetic system, progressively moving from a state of order to disorder as it uses its energy to do useful work. And remember, this movement from order to disorder, according to the law of entropy, is an irreversible process. Secondly, physicists tell us that at some point in the distant future, 30 to 60 billion years from now, the universe will eventually achieve a maximum state of disorder or entropy, what they technically refer to as thermodynamic equilibrium. Layman's terms, heat death. That is to say, all temperature and pressure within the universe will be at an equilibrium. Needless to say, not very good for life. Now, if this is the case, that is, the universe will eventually achieve a maximum state of disorder or entropy, 
Well, then the universe would have already achieved this maximum state of disorder or entropy had it been around for an infinite amount of time. Think about it. If the universe had an infinite amount of time to use its energy and progressively move in an irreversible process from order to disorder, well then all of the energy in the universe would already be at this maximum state of disorder or this maximum state of entropy. But the question is, is our universe at a maximum state of entropy today? The answer is no. In fact, our universe is still at a, has a very low entropy. How do we know? Well, as Father Robert Spitzer likes to say, stars are burning, plants are growing, physicists are thinking. And so therefore, it seems reasonable to conclude that the universe could not have been around for an infinite amount of time, because had it been, the universe would have already achieved the maximum state of entropy, but it has not. So if the universe could not have been around for an infinite amount of time, well then, the universe must have been around for a finite amount of time. And if a finite amount of time, well then the universe must have had a beginning. And we already know what that implies, that metaphysically necessitates a transcendent cause or creator that gave rise to the very existence of time and physical reality itself, namely the cosmos. So in conclusion, we can see how the law of entropy is a data source, along with the BVG theorem, that establishes belief in God as credible even from a scientific perspective. And furthermore, it's important to keep in mind that this argument from the law of entropy is universally applicable. It not only applies to our universe, but it also applies to the hypothetical multiverse and bouncing universe models. So once again, we can see how rather than science leading us away from God, science is actually pointing us in the direction of God. To learn more about this topic and others, I would encourage our viewers to check out our website, www.majacenter.com.